what's happening guys welcome back to more mana gaming here with another member nori yes. Arjun saga's first champion uh former champion as former. as it would <laughs> yeah man Ugh. still a rough beat but it is what it is you know mm -hmm. okay so um uh we want to talk about uh columbus coming up yes so we have a uh, columbus coming up or no, yes, Columbus. And uh, we want to give you some advice because unfortunately, none of us will be attending. So uh, the best thing we could do is give you what we would have been testing for, what what our thought process would have been going into the format. So you want to have, you want to put any input in first? I wanted to play Auron Fizzy. Yeah, I, I think very much so that the Auron decks or just any any Auron or Liam decks would have been a very good deck going into the... Uh, the event. Uh, Columbus seems to be, mm -hmm. uh, have um, two things. Uh, the common thing is that Hoena Kite still hasn't gotten any worse. So it's still mm -hmm. one of the best decks to play. Yeah. But it's not the best deck in the format as we thought going into Richmond. I think the numbers kind of show that Hoena Kite was the dominant deck, air quotes, or Hoena <laughs> X decks. Yeah. But the, uh, the, the story of the tournament in general was that the top tables was littered with decks playing uh, Ayakuma Juggernaut, which might be the best deck. Best, best pre card. Best unit, yeah. Definitely. Like, yeah, Sylphia at its own tier, but it's only a one of. But a card that you could play three of being the best is definitely Ayakuma Juggernaut. And it's something that we want to go in, wanted going into this uh, format. So the idea was either you can beat it or you could join it. Mm -hmm. And joining it, I did it in Richmond to success. And I didn't feel like I was at a disadvantage. And now I kind of want to beat it now. Because yeah. my aversion to playing mirror matches and stuff. So I'd rather play the best Juggernaut mat deck if mm -hmm. I could. Okay. Uh, advice for the, the players that are going to attend is like... his uh, Chris's deck list, the uh, RN uh, Fizzy, would probably be the best... Uh, one of the better decks to play. Uh, reason being, uh, one, you could be a Juggernaut deck. But also, Iskandar is very good against blue decks. Yes. <laughs> um, we played the mirror match, or we played the the Aran decks today. Any Iskandar matches, and it's hard to beat Iskandar when you're bouncing him as your only removal. Yep. So um, uh, that's one of the things I like. Uh, uh, going into the format is like, or going into that tournament, it's like what I would keep in mind is that if you don't have hard removal for Iskandar in general, then likely uh, uh, it's going to be a rough tournament. But what's what's the the hard removal for Iskandar? It's like only Kanoa, isn't it? Yeah, so Corona, um, which uh, can't be stopped. So Corona answers all units in the game, Sylphia and um, and Iskandar. But what you have is uh, you have uh, when you play Sylphia, you have access to Royal Command, which is what people have been teching nowadays. Yeah. And Iskandar, uh, Iskandar decks rather, whether it's R and Kite or whatever the case may be, they also can play that tech too. Oh, yeah. uh, we did a deck profile with Colin Kaiser. Yeah, and his deck list was in uh, was a Liam Kite deck that made top eight, I believe, in uh, in Richmond. It was a fantastic deck, and it's one that I would have been testing too. And that's sort of the the mentality is that like if your only answer is just your one Corona shard, mm -hmm. well, that you know you have a lot of problems coming your way because you can play between the statues or just other ways to recur them. Like these threats are not going to be answered just one and done like they used to. Mm -hmm. uh, just to throw this out there. Video a link to the video in the description down below, yeah. so that way you guys can see his video. Oh yeah, for Colin Kaiser's list, it's, it's going to be really good. Yes. Um. Uh, so that was one of the things, and the reason why I would assume playing Arn might be the better choice is because of Colin's list. So Colin's list played uh, Kaze's, and uh, so that way he's able to tap out during turn. So uh, it would be a very controlling light list. You play uh, finishing race, and then you play. Mm -hmm. Uh, you hold up Kaze so that way you could defend yourself. Yeah. But with Arn's ability, you could just uh, tap down a blocker or, or Instead, tap down yeah. attack it. Yeah. Stop, that, stop the attacker from attacking you. So um, going forward, I probably would uh, would definitely try a list with like uh, mo uh, multiple finishing rays, multiple celestial cr uh, chronostasis, celestial mm -hmm. magic chronostasis, and um, uh, that's probably where I would be in the format if I was going to the event somewhere in in an Arn, Luna, Arn, uh, Fizzy, Fizzy or Kite list. Yeah. Because yeah. those are the main cards that really get rid of Juggernaut. Yeah, so, um, but, uh, oh, yeah, between uh, you playing Artis, uh, or I believe Artis is his name, the the six drop that can get back two gears, the mini Iskandar. Yeah. So you could get back target attack and quickness to attack the, the Juggernaut if they're mm -hmm. tapped out. Or you have access to Finishing Ray and Chronostasis as well. So okay. uh, these are all in the colors. So uh, just a little advice for Columbus uh, coming in or for you guys going out there. And uh, good luck to anybody who's out there. 
and I hope somebody overtakes my first place because I am dying to not have the pressure on me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Being the only master or whatever, I just hope Eric Goodwin or somebody, you know, just some, slaughters some, it. Some good guy. Yeah, right? All right, so... um, Any other decks you feel would be great? So, obviously, Hoenna, uh, the, the one thing to note is that I didn't think these things, it doesn't mean that Hoenna Kite is a bad deck. It's that if you had a bad Hoenna Kite matchup, honestly, you shouldn't be playing a deck, that mm -hmm. deck in the tournament, just plain and simple. It's still one of the, the best decks going forward. Uh, Jesse ended up taking it with Hoenna Kite, despite everybody gunning for the deck in, yeah. uh, in Richmond. So, uh, something to note that, like, the deck is far from bad. Uh, I'm trying to avoid playing Sylphia because I think you can play around Sylphia, as I tried to do in Richmond. And um, I'm sure that there's answers to it too, but there aren't many answers to Juggernaut. And that's why my focus would be on the card that is very hard to get rid of rather than the card that does have answers to it. Okay. So, uh, the other choices would be, of the time, the uh, Jamal Luna. It has not let me down yet. I, as some of you saw, I, I ended up winning the, the regional the, yes. in New Jersey. Came in first place. Yeah, so I, I ended up, it would have been me and Ryan Valentino. We played, a, um, we played in the Swiss rounds and it was a rough beating, which is why I have... Uh, this aver or this uh, inclination to start playing a Liam deck because mm -hmm. I saw how difficult the matchup was for us, but um, uh, that deck can also be very good because it's basically Ergon without Ergon in the format. Yeah, and it has many tricks available to it, but the deck list is a little tight. So I noticed people. Um, I played the mirror match in the in the regional, and a guy was playing uh, main boarded uh, uh, cryptic deflections and transfiguration masters, which yeah. is a combo to get rid of Iskandar. Okay. They, they play him, you make him untargetable by, by his own effect, and then you drop Transfiguration Master, and then you expel him from the game altogether. Then oh. you'll never have to deal with him. So that's one of the combos, but um, I've seen that. Uh, the list I played had a, a tweak where I played the Greatest Heist, and mm -hmm. my intention was to beat the other control decks by taking away their, their threats and expelling them from the game altogether. So uh, some uh, depending on what you're trying to beat, the deck has a game for it. But I know for sure that in his curse, uh, current uh, configuration from, <laughs> so likely it might be one of the biggest events. So. Yes, hopefully. Yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, so. Another deck you think might. So I have people talking to me about uh, dragon hold decks. I'm curious to see because uh, again the difference between like if uh, a juggernaut deck is one of the best decks in the format, mm -hmm. uh, that means people are playing. If people are playing water, there's no real hard answers, hard removal. So it's something to note. Like if they don't have hard removal, then you playing all these very aggressive threats with quickness and stuff. Like bouncing a silver watchwoman doesn't do anything, because they could just play it again. Yeah. Fire is notorious for having very sticky, uh, either very sticky threats with the the Rao Wyvern Rider. Yeah. The the four mana fifteen k with quickness fifteen hundred, or they they can get underneath you too. And bouncing the units may not be enough. So, uh, I heard of that, and obviously um JD and like a lot of these guys uh, that they're big fans of Mono Air. I was very impressed by the list uh, that I played against it twice in Richmond. Mm -hmm. Both times they were tough games. Uh, I ended up very uh, squeezing through by running them out of threats, but um, it's something that I would look at too. Yeah. Would you still play Mono Air for Columbus? Would I play it? I, I haven't tested with it. I just know that Kanast, the the seven mana, uh, the legendary, Yeah, it's very good. It gets around Chronostasis and it gets around Finishing Ray. Its effect says it's unaffected by spells when you bounce up, up an air unit. So mm -hmm. that's something to note that if people are trying to be juggernauts by the spell, the finishing rays or the chronostasis, uh, you're already naturally like uh, have an answer to those cards. Okay. So it may not be mono air, but there might might be an air list where it's like it plays kind of grindy, like my the the place that I tend to prefer. Mm -hmm. And they'll play cards that recur these threats. So maybe some number of statues in the deck and just drop a chronos with an air unit. So that way they play around finishing race and you just have an unkillable threat just attacking and stuff, so. Okay. Any advice on, like, how to play the game or for Columbus or... It, it, a lot of people are talking about, like, stalling. Like, uh, that being a, a tactic in the game or the fact that the game doesn't go to game three very often. Like, yeah. And in reality, I, I don't blame people for feeling that way. But I also, coming from, like, a magic background, is understand that there's a mentality of the player of to not concede when they've lost the game. Yeah. Where they're like, oh, if I draw these two perfect cards over the course of, you know, like the next six turns, I may win the game. And that's just not good enough, especially when you know you're the aggressor, right? So um, acknowledging your role is as important in this game as it is in other mana-based games like Magic and, you know, mm -hmm. to an extent Dragon Ball as well. And it's something that players should uh, take into consideration when uh, playing up against decks like R and Fizzy or uh, my deck, the Jamal Lunas, that are trying to, like, go into the late game. Yeah. Um, keep, uh, keep track of the clock. That's very important. 
15 minutes into the game, if you're, you're not, one, if you're not having fun and you feel like you're going to lose the game, then that's already the battle's halfway lost. So you should just give up there, go into your sideboard and play a little bit more aggressively. It may end up backfiring, but the thing is that it's better than the, the alternative of just playing the one game, losing that game, and then going into game two having to rush 15 minutes, 12 minutes to win a game. That's probably not going to happen. Okay. The thing is that like it is a valid strategy that um, it's not that stalling is a strategy, but more so that like as a control player, especially my mentality when playing these games, is that attacking towers is extremely risky at all stages in the game. Yes. Um, I mean, you've learned uh, you learned it today. Like <laughs> there were there were a lot of games where you play where it's like yeah, there's five face down towers and you may not know where they are, but if you end up hitting the worst tower, it could end up losing you the game. Yes, that happened. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, it's one of the things where it's like. I, uh, you cannot blame a player for playing conservatively because these towers, uh, as, at this point in the game right now, they're very, very powerful. So um, it's just something to note that like, uh, I wouldn't get mad at players for playing a little bit slower, playing more cautiously, but um, be, uh, be mindful of the idea of like somebody being cautious and somebody trying to stall you out of time. Yes. So there, there's a distinction too. Also, what I would say is um, for some people, if you have a question about a ruling or anything, Call the judge, don't argue with the other player, because mm-hmm. I've seen that happen quite a few times where somebody was like, I don't think it works that way. They're arguing back and forth, and then after they're arguing back and forth, they go into time, the yeah. other guy already won game one, and then he, when the judge finally come over, he's complaining about slow play, and pretty much after he complains about slow play, the judge is like, well, the game is over, I can't do anything about it. Yeah, a tournament etiquette is just in general. It's just that like there's no there's no stigma for you calling a judge for anything or everything actually too, to an extent where it's like as long if you have a question and you feel like a judge should solve it, 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 it is in your best interest because judges are trained to both uh, acknowledge and you know like uh, take care of the situation, but also they will give you extensions too. So if you end up taking a little bit more time, just make sure you get the the maximum chance of you playing a complete game of Argent. Like uh, like you said, it's just like arguing doesn't really get anywhere when these judges are meant to help you out anyways too. So it, it just it makes a lot of sense. Yes. And um, every second, I, I, unfortunately, at this time, every second does count in Argent because the games do tend to take a little bit longer. Yes. So make sure time management is going to be key in, in uh, coming into Richmond as well. Only I feel Dragon Halt sucks until <laughs> set two. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, that's my baby. I mean, I, I'm dying to just soul burst on turn one, drag mm-hmm. it with Dragon Hole Soul and just start attacking right away. But my fear of the towers is just they're they're too good right now yes. for uh, an aggro deck. I think um, uh, our team in Richmond did not play delayed poisons in in their deck list of Hoenn and Kite, mm-hmm. and it never ended up hurting against the aggro decks because uh, the idea like you only want them specifically for like shard beasts and stuff. But it's some shard beast is just not good enough anymore. Like, mm-hmm. hand of triple one drops may be too slow. So that's just something, like, for these decks, it, that's just something to know. It's like, you, it, it's so hard to be aggressive in this game because the creatures just don't line up well with both other opposing creatures and the towers, too, that they have to be. Mm-hmm. So. I don't really have anything else to say. Would you have anything else to say? No, just this was just, like, a little talk, so uh, something people to listen to. Um, again, I'm just super bummed out that we can't go to Columbus. Yes. It would have been a lot of fun, too. Uh, I would I'm still trying to get that two P. Uh, my goal is to be a tribe in Argos, as, <laughs> as I've been saying. So you know, you got to get a couple championships under your belt. Have many faces of me. Yes. But um, uh, good luck to everybody that's going over there. Hopefully, this advice helps out anybody. If mm-hmm. somebody finds anything about this, you know, they could just like and subscribe. You know, do the, yes, the, the of usual stuff. <laughs> so. And then also just throwing it out there, if you guys saw any of the cards that we mentioned in the video. Uh, there's an affiliate link down below from TCG Player. It costs nothing to you guys to use it. It helps support the channel and brings us a little revenue to bring you better content and for